My name is Dana and I'm here at the Cayuga Nature Center today with my friend Oakley. Oakley is a great horned owl. And we're here today to teach you in this video about two very highly developed senses that owls have that make them pretty unique in the community of raptors or birds of prey. Let's start with a look at Oakley's <laughs> eyes. Most birds have their eyes set on the side of their heads. Owls actually have their eyes set in front, right in the middle of their face, so their eyes are forward-facing. The only other group of birds with forward-facing eyes are actually penguins. Pretty cool. The other thing you might notice is Oakley's amazing eye color. A lot of owls have very dark brown to black eyes because they hunt almost exclusively at night, and these dark colored eyes allow them to camouflage or blend in. Several owls that are native to New York, however, have an orange to yellow eye, much lighter in color. This has to do with the fact that their hunting habits are a little bit different. These birds actually prefer to hunt during the dawn to dusk hours, which actually makes them crepuscular instead of nocturnal. They actually might be found, just like the great horned owl, hunting into the daytime hours during times of the year when they have to provide food for a mate who is sitting on the nest incubating eggs, or for very young hatchlings and young who may demand more food than they can hunt during the nighttime hours. The other birds that are native to this area that have these light colored eyes include the sawwit owl and the eastern screech owl. People often think that because owls have such large eyes that are adapted to hunting in low light that they may not be able to see very well during the daytime. But actually, most owls can see equally well during the daytime as they can at night. Their night vision is so incredible that one study found that most owls can locate prey across a football field with the light of only one single candle. Their vision is approximately 200 times better than our vision as humans. One thing that I love to tell people about here at the Nature Center um, is busting animal myths or misconceptions we might have about um, animals that we just think are true, but it turns out they're totally false. One of those things that I talk about when I take Oakley out is the common question, can owls turn their heads all the way around? A lot of people think that they actually can, but sorry, they really can't. In fact, an, an owl can only turn its head about 270 degrees, or about, you know, 75% of a full circle. So what that looks like is that if Oakley is facing completely forward, just like I am right now, he could turn his head and then his beak would be over his shoulder. He could continue to turn his head and his beak would be over his spine. He could continue to turn his head and his beak would be over this shoulder. But that's about as far as he can go. He can't go any further than that. So we have to spin his head backwards in order to make it come front again before looking this direction. So no, sorry, they actually can't turn their head all the way around, but they can turn it pretty darn far. Let's talk a little bit about owl ears. Now, um, Oakley belongs to a group of owls that are typically called horned owls or eared owls because of these two feather tufts on either side of his head. These aren't physically his ears. They have nothing to do with how this animal hears things. Instead, they're pretty much two tufts of feathers, also called plumicorns. I know, isn't that a great word, plumicorn? It's one of my favorite words when it comes to animals. These feathers are hotly disputed in the scientific community about why exactly they might be there. One theory by scientists is that when Oakley is camouflaging or hiding himself from a predator, he might raise these ears or make them stand up in order to break up his outline while he's against a tree trunk to make it less obvious to something that might be trying to eat him that he is actually there. So his silhouette or his shape is being hidden against the tree. Another theory from scientists 
is based on the fact that these owls can put down those tufts or raise them up depending upon their mood or how they're feeling. So they think that actually that great horned owls might be using these ear tufts to tell other great horned owls what mood they're in at the moment, whether they're happy or they're sad or they're saying, hey, get away. I don't want you by me right now. So it's been very interesting to watch the debate we still don't really know for sure what the plumicorns are for on a great horned owl. Now that we know that plumicorns aren't actually ears, we can talk a little bit about how an owl hears. <laughs> so all owls have ear openings on either side of their head that are hidden under the feathers that surround their face. The feathers around their face are actually really important in aiding the owl to hear and all owls have what's called a facial disc. When an owl fluffs up the feathers around its face, it basically creates a bull shape. And this bull shape is really great at catching sound waves or sounds produced by animals around it during the nighttime. Because it is really low light, they need the aid of their ears to help them locate prey, even though they have such great eyesight. In some owls that are strictly nocturnal owls, like the barn owl, they actually have another trick up their sleeve in finding their food. They have asymmetrical ear openings, meaning that their right ear opening is slightly higher than the left ear opening. This means that sound actually hits it about 200 microseconds before it hits the left ear opening. So when the owl turns its head, so that both sound waves are hitting those ear openings at the same time, this actually redirects the owl's flight and vision so that it's facing directly at the prey item. This process is called triangulation, and it's pretty unique in the animal kingdom. And it's so well developed that it works even in absolutely no light when a barn owl may be hunting. Other cool things to consider about owl hearing is that it actually has affected their beak shape. Because an owl's beak is so set close to its face and it has that kind of curved profile where it curves down, this allows sound when it hits the owl's face to bounce off of their beak and directly towards those ear openings. Thank you for joining us today and learning all about owl eyesight and hearing. And we have lots more to talk about when it comes to Oakley himself, as well as our other animal ambassadors here at the Cuga Nature Center. So we do hope that you do tune in regularly to our Monday programs to learn a little bit of more about the animals here at the Cuga Nature Center. Thank you for tuning in.